Desde Orlando para el Cyber World con Listen to Me. Y ahora vamos a hacer una recolecta mental de lo que está pasando ahora en el momento de hoy aquí desde el Cyberspace Orlando para el Mundo. Saludos Puerto Rico, saludos Orlando, saludos Chicago, saludos San Antonio y el resto del mundo que nos están escuchando en Radio UNT.net en Cyberspace. And listen to me. That's the proper introduction. All right, we have Randy Ross with us uh, real quick with us and we're going to um, uh, talk with him about what's going on and uh, los eventos que están pasando en, 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 en el mundo y para los Estados Unidos. Uh, but I'm with my beautiful Mimi Stewart right Hello. next to me over here. How you doing, Mimi? I'm good. Hello. All right. And we're going to be talking about uh, some of the things that's happening with uh, uh, the uh, uh, school, the assessments, and many other things. But we'll, uh, Miguel, if we can, um, uh, put some music real quick because I got to go downstairs and let Randy in. So I'll be right back after the song. Bueno, mi gente, aquí estamos en Listen to Me. Yes. Yeah. It's another Listen. Tuesday. It's another Tuesday, and it's, yes, 7 o'clock and past 7 o'clock, and we're having a lot of fun here in cyberspace. You know why? Because we're with God, we're with friends, and we have a good thing to do, and it's to tell you people, Listen to me. <laughs> but yeah, but we have a lot of fun. And I just wanted to start out the show with a story that um, one of, uh, because I was uh, taking judo, you know, I, I was a black belt in judo. I was. I have not. Wow. Well, really? I did not die. So I am a black belt. And I'm a red belt. It makes hey, motion. Wow. Arts. I yeah. have. I don't even have a belt on right now. <laughs> <laughs> and Miguel has a belt too. All right. So. What I, one of the things that the teacher used to t tell us, you know, because after he, he'd run us dry and we, we couldn't move and he practiced us to death, he would tell us a story trying to try uh, while we were trying to gasp for air. And this was a story. He said God, that there that was once. Even, that sounds like punishment. I know, but it, it was fun, and especially when you were 18, 19, you know, I had abs and all that stuff. That was oh, kind of cool. That was a long time ago. <laughs> yep. A long time ago. <laughs> so the, there was a story about a samurai, and the samurai, he, he had the fame of being one of the most fiercest samurais in the world oh. and he did that dedicated in his uh, later years to teach people and people well, would come to him and he would teach and he would show uh, how to be a better person and so forth but there was a very impetuous warrior había un guerrero bien impetuoso por ahí buscando ese samurai and he went and he looked and searched for the samurai and he started saying hey if you're such a great fighter fight me and the samurai said okay I'll fight you so they off they go to the to the uh, center of the park and everybody gets around there and the samurai is just standing there and he has no his sword is not drawn he doesn't he lets it fall to the ground and the uh, and the warrior el guerrero empieza a decirle malas palabras starts telling him bad words insult him spit on him even all the way down to his ancestors and the old samurai guy didn't do squat well the hours went through the hours came through and the warrior, he just got tired. He just got tired and left. The students came to the samurai and said, well, Samurai, how do you take all that punishment? How you, how you get, uh, 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 I don't understand it. You always tell us to be right, do the right thing and everything. And you should, even if you would have lost the battle, it would have been better than just taking all that humiliation. And the samurai said, when somebody, when somebody, is, uh, when somebody gives you a gift and you reject it, who do the gift belongs to? And one of the teachers, one of the students raises his hand and says, it belongs to the person giving the present. That's the same thing that happens with jealousy, with hate, with arrogance. You don't pay attention to it. It still belongs to the person that is issuing it. That's why, why you gotta lead, lead your life. And he walked away and everybody, all the students were like, <gasps> and us too, we, by that time we had regained our breaths and we were putting on our geese and starting practice all over again. But the point of it is that life, there's a lot of people that may be bad to you, but that is what God has placed us here. You know, we have to weave ourselves through las serpientes y, la, y las culebras and, and, and there's bad people, but we have to be we have to be like the dove and we have to be with the brain of a snake 
because we have to have intelligence to be able to move through this world. And that's my monologue for today. But we want to touch with Mimi Stewart. Queremos tocar con Mimi Stewart sobre la temática del, de, de, de la, los estudiantes. And um, hay una llamada, ¿verdad, mi, mi hermano? Yeah. Uh, bueno, Mimi, let's give a brief uh, history back of what we're doing and, and what we're, we're, we're trying to accomplish with, with this testing and this assessment and the stress that it's causing. So let's talk a bit about that. Yeah, the FSA is the Florida Standard Assessment Testing. That's for third graders through mm -hmm. 10th grade. They have to pass this test in order to pass the grade. It doesn't matter even if they pass on their report card, they have to pass this test. The issue is that the past five years, it mm -hmm. was fourth and fifth and higher. Mm -hmm. Now it went down to third grade. So we have eight-year-olds that are going through this, not really understanding the severeness of this test. They're eight. They don't really know what it, it titles. Then when you have to inform them, now they're stressed. Now they're pressured. Now some of them don't even like school. I have a little one in particular that stated to me that he is sad. He, he cried. He's hurt because he's afraid of failing. He's afraid of failing us. So this is a pressure that a lot of them are getting. It's way too young. It's a lot on them. And we don't understand why it keeps the age keeps getting lower. Is it going to get even any lower, like lower than eight? Well, we have been. Uh, this is an interesting note. And be, and before we we, we we jump in with uh, Randy, and thank you for being patient, Randy, and welcome to the show. Yeah, I actually locked my um, charger outside, so it worked out really well that I was running a little bit late. <laughs> that <laughs> is that but is yeah. true. That is true. But hey, that that is true. Hey, but things thank happen. Thank you for your patience. But you know, I hear this from Melissa McGee, a good friend of mine who has children at the high school level, how much pressure her her children are under. I, I don't recall it being like that. I remember when standardized testing was coming around, we had to fill in the little dots and all that, but I don't. I think it's far more sincere and, and concerning, sounds like to me, than what it was. I can imagine being eight and having to you know, go through that process. It's, it's basically the, they're learning something in class where they have to do their quizzes and their tests, and then yet, they're having to be pressured with another test that is kind of off of what they're learning in class. How can they possibly get all this in within the year? You have one shot, and after that, you fail, and you find out in summer after the fact? Well, they're going to have to face another test when they graduate from high school. It's called the SATs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that determines That's if an they option, could. Though, I think. The, well, that's a, now it's an option. In my time, you had to take it. And if you didn't do well in that test, it determined what colleges you could right, go to. Right, correct, yeah. So it was kind of funky. But the, the thing of it is, one thing is high school, one thing is third grade. You see, there's a big gap in between. And we've already, we, we, hemos tratado de investigar esto sobre la, lo, lo, los exámenes en, um, uh, de tercer grado para la aptitud, para pasar del tercer grado al cuarto grado. Si ellos no pasan eso, no pasan el grado. Y esa presión está generando muchas frustraciones en, en niños de tercer grado que niños de tercer grado, third graders that should be thinking on what TV, uh, have fun, uh, their classes of course, but you know not not uh, hanging by a thread because of a test. Yeah. Well, Mimi and 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 Randy, thank you for the patience, but I have somebody on the phone. Hi, how you doing? Hola. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Bendiciones para todos. Bendiciones, bendiciones. Mira, um, para la gente, para que nos te identifiquen, ¿cuál es tu nombre y cuál es tu posición? What's your name and what's your position? Pues claro que sí. Mi nombre es Giselle Borisanto. Mm -hmm. I'm a reading specialist. My bachelor's degree is in special education, educación especial. And my master's is in reading education. Basically, it's a position that has been open because of all these testing that we're doing uh, across the nation. Because mm -hmm. it's not only Florida. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, we understand that this is something that's nationwide. But Correct. remember, or originating originating us from Orlando and Central, to, from Central Florida to the cyber world, um, uh, that everywhere in the world they could see us and they could hear us. Uh, of course. Florida is, is uh, the, the, the thematic for us. But you're right. It is a tidal wave, and I've been seeing other counties and other states uh, writing about that. 
Uh, my dear, uh, thank you very much for calling in, and your husband too. Um, we're very grateful that uh, he, of, of of him being educators because I know I know that your husband has contacted me, and he is an educator in full sale. And uh, but Mimi, one of the things that I wanted to bring up, una de las cosas que quería traer era a colación sobre esto de los exámenes que pasa a nivel de todos los Estados Unidos. Mimi, right? That you tried to invite somebody. Uh, related to a school board, we're not going right. to say name, but they said right. no. They they said they're not coming on um, uh, onto the show. Yeah, they declined. Why? Who was it? They, I don't. Well, I'm not asking. Give me the names. initials and I'll <laughs> say it for you. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why not? I mean, I understand. That's what the problem is with political officials. They I don't want to come out is. and and actually defend their positions or their you know their reasoning behind this, and that's what makes parents so outraged. They, this is why I wanted to speak about it. It got me upset. Um, no, I'm definitely not going to name names. I just mm -hmm, appreciate mm -hmm. the fact they give me the time of the day and listen to me. Joey K Cadle, um, <laughs> I mean, uh, Linda Cobert, no. Bill Sublet. I mean, I can just go through <laughs> the <good>. names. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> eventually is going to be the he's one. like, ah, oh, that one's That good. one. That one. There we but, go. The thing, but the thing of it is, is that that's, that's good because we have one that said no. So we got to go to the next and Correct. we got to go to the next mm -hmm. and we got to go to the next. Somebody will say yes. And For sure. Also, uh, now that you're going to be tackling that, I'll, I'll probably be making some phone calls to the Department of Education here in Florida and say, hey, you know, um, we, got some, we got a show here in Orlando. Can somebody come down, phone, do something? But, my dear. And I'd and also be looking to target people that might be thinking about running for Orange County Public Schools. Yes. And I know, if, I know a few of those people, and I can give you the, the names, not to mention Chabby Carter and other people. But, I mean, there are other people that are thinking about running for school board. Those are the ones you need to get in here because yes. those are the ones that are going to be a little bit more on your side, not the ones that are sitting on the establishment Very side. So. See, yep. that's why there's a reason that you had to come back and come I know. Here. Yes. See? Listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> exactly. I knew, that, I knew the name would catch. And my dear, what are your uh, my uh, what are your sentiments about the testing? Uh, do you think that is something positive? Could we do without the testing? Give me your opinion, your sincere opinion. Well, at this point, I'm 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 going to tell you that it is. I don't think that testing is bad. I think there is a way of we need to know if our students are doing well. Mm -hmm. Also, we should make teachers accountable. Now, my right. problem is this. When we have a test that defines a child and a test that de defines the teacher, mm -hmm. um, that's what I have a problem with. I mean, I'm telling you from the perspective of an educator in a public school system, now working in a private school setting, mm -hmm. and also as a parent, I have that child who is a great test taker <clears throat> and is naturally... Uh, assertive and it's going to come in and just going to conquer and then that uh, student that has nightmares the day before the test yeah. and even as uh, right now in our private school setting they have a different test and they don't take it to the extent as in the public school setting but my child is still struggling because she remembers that test she remembers the anxiety that the teachers were taking and they were um, carrying on in the classroom when teachers are being told, hey, you know what? Your job by me might be in stake. Hey, mm -hmm. your salary by me in stake. <laughs> because if your students are not passing, then that means you're a bad teacher. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, at that point, then I do have a problem with that. And uh, at the same time, I think that it's a wake up call to all of us wake up call to educators, uh, wake up call to parents, then we don't allow. Um, the politics to get involved in the education right. of our children. Exactly. And yeah, we sh we do have a voice. Uh, many times we don't exercise a voice, so we just okay. The kid is in school, you know, eight hours. I'll pick him up, you know, at three or uh, at the end of the day with aftercare. I don't have time to deal with that. But we are seeing how this society is increasing in our kids. And to tell you the truth, you know what? When you, when you see the days after days and years after years, I've been an educator for mm -hmm. um, 18 years. Uh, does uh, learning take place when you're testing or you're teaching your kids how to take a test? Mm, not really. That's true. <laughs> yeah, because the thing is... I mean, but isn't uh, that really, I mean, honestly, isn't that kind of what we do in life every day anyway? We're tested every day and... That, you know, whether it is how we comprehend something that happens in life or et cetera, we're being tested all the time. 
Yeah, I have a challenge with educators being part of that that evaluation system, and I'm a huge supporter of teachers and all the administrators mm -hmm. uh, involved in education because I think they certainly get a, a bad end of the rap on this this whole question. Um, but aren't children, and I hate to put you in that position, but aren't children as they grow up going to consistently be tested in different stages of their life? And does it matter if they start at age eight or in high school? But I think I think what Mimi what Mimi is trying to say is that the the stress that uh oh Mimi's mad at me she's turning the camera around. Hey, bye <laughs> see you later never talk to you again I can't say, don't ever bring that Randy Ross back on the show <laughs> like what where huh what was it? Um, get him but, off but, but get him basically off the show I think right what, now. I think what Mimi was trying to say is that there is a stress factor within it and you're right uh, we do get tested throughout our 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 our, our life. life yeah. And even when we become in professional, we're, we're tested on what we can achieve. You're sure. right. The thing of it is, is, and I think what she's saying is that there is a different <clears throat> method to be able to gauge that without causing, I guess, undue stress. Uh, or am I wrong, my dear? Right, right. I think it's being able to understand and being able to exercise that right that we have as parents and it's not allowed our kids to be pushed around not allow our kids to be stressed around if we have a problem with the way that the teachers are taking this uh teaching in place in a classroom take it to a higher level let your voice be heard if it's not being heard at the school level take it to the county if they're not listening to you take it to the next level I think if parents, we start making uh, the decision to be involved, that's when changes are going to happen. Can I ask uh, you for can many I, times, oh, that's what we want to leave everything up to the school system. And uh, I don't want to deal with that either. One moment. Um, uh, uh, Mimi wants to ask you a question. Um, as a professional, yeah. and I appreciate you um, giving us a call, do you think, in your opinion, that eight-year-olds are – are good with starting off on this test. Um, apparently, they started this maybe five years ago, going down to eight. Now, do, don't you think that's kind of young? Or what do you think would be a great age? Just wondering, on when they should start this FSA. You know what? To tell you the truth, I think that I, I don't have a problem with that age. I have a problem with the way that we that we look at the assessment. Now, right now. I tell you from the private school setting, my eight-year-old, I have an eight-year-old and I have a nine-year-old. My eight-year-old uh, is taking the SSA at the private school setting. And the way that has been administered, the way that it's been given to them, they're not stressed. She's not stressed at all. Now, at the contrary, mommy, no, I just see that I, there's some things that I don't know, but most of the things, you know, I feel comfortable. Uh, now, the teacher's not going to lose her job. She knows she's not going to be retained if she doesn't do it. On the contrary, the other tests that we take, that we give in the public school uh, setting, students know. Teachers know. And unfortunately, the teachers are on the best stress and we're carrying on that stress to the side. And when we work on their stress, not other, not everybody works well on the stress. Mm -hmm. And that's when we start having a problem. And I yes, see. I Yes, because we're working I mean, under stress right now on this radio show because it's so hot in here. You can only imagine. This is like a sweatshop. <laughs> Jay is running a sweatshop I mean, on this radio show right now. Just so you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> now, she said, now, you said that there is a difference between the private sector and the public. Um, the test is not so, I guess, excessive in the private. Is that true? The test, the test um, actually, it does assess. And uh, the ones that is given at my, at my school is given per grade level, every grade level. And the students know they're going to be taking every year a test according to the standards that are being taught at the school okay. and that standards that nationwide and on the state level that school, the school has to uh, have in accordance. But the, the students know that that test is not going to define if they pass or not. Mm -hmm. It could be an attribute. It could be <clears throat> something that uh, now 
student is not doing well in the class, the student is not being successful in the classroom. If the student is not having great good grades, the student is not uh, getting the information, and he doesn't pass the test either. Now we have something across board that he's saying this child needs some extra help or some extra time. Now um, that's the difference between now the third grade test that my child, my other child, had to take last year at the public school study. Uh, yes, I mean she will come home crying wow. every day. Come, I mean, and even to this year, then now she's at the, at the private school setting with me. Um, the night before, this Sunday, now right now we're in the middle of testing. Um, it was 11.30, I couldn't, she couldn't fall asleep. Yesterday, it was the first day of testing, and by 11 o'clock, they were calling me, your daughter is sick. Wow. And uh, after I sat down with her, she's like, mom, it's like, after like I finished the test, I felt like a big relief because my chest was hurting the whole morning. And I'm like, my child is nine and she still has the residue of all this boxing yep. of politicians that cannot come to an agreement of what test they're gonna give and what they're gonna do. And um, my child has this boxing that she's been carrying for the last year. But uh, sorry, Jay. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, I, I, also, I also believe that it's the teacher themselves putting all the stress in the kids, because like you, like you said in the private school, it, it, it just child that's in the private school it doesn't go through the stress. My kids are doing it through virtual school, and they're not even stressed at all, because hmm. the teacher they don't see the teacher in a daily basis. My kids doing virtual school, they go to school twice a month, so they don't see the teacher that often at all. And um, they're not stressed. My son went to this morning, did his test. My daughter went out in the evening and the afternoon, did her test and came back home, chilling. You know? And I believe that the teacher themselves putting that stress on them. Because remember, if the kids, if, if your classroom as a teacher, tell me if I'm wrong, ma'am, as a teacher, your classroom doesn't do good, you're in trouble. Yeah. You, you see what I'm talking about or not? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I so you're in, you. you are, you're in trouble as a teacher. So no matter what the teacher go through the whole year, teaching the kids how to add, how to subscribe, all that nonsense, is this test that is actually keeping the job safe for them. So mm -hmm. it, the, the same thing with the kids. I don't care if they got A, B, Cs, Ds. If they fail this test, you don't make it. It's the same thing with the teacher. So the teacher just moving the stress that they're getting to the kids, and that's what's going on. So you've seen a difference between virtual school. Oh yeah, yeah. This year my kids, school. my kids are doing virtual school this year, and they're doing the FSA this year through virtual school. They're good. Really? They go to sleep, they wake up, they go yep. to take the test and come back home. But we have college students that had to take a day or two off after the election because they were they were crying and so upset about that. I mean, are we not just adjusting our children to this place of this, you know, you, you're entitled to have this grief about the process that you have to go through? I mean, I don't have kids, so don't get mad at she's No, about, no, no. I no. think she's about ready to no, attack. No, no, no. And, 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 and Randy, I'm, I'm, I'm worried. I'm, I'm getting, really I'm getting, worried. I'm getting what you're saying. It's okay. true. And Mimi, it's true, but... Mimi will not... Mimi, a, Mimi will not attack She's got some pretty you. high heels on, just so you know. <laughs> you may not but. be able to see them, but I heard her coming through the door. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, and I, I heard what you're saying. And, yeah. and at the end of the day, it's in us as parents. But the thing is, if they... Our kids spend more so the days with these teachers at school. Yeah. They spend, what, eight hours at school? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how many hours they could spend with the, with the parents? Four? Yeah. Three? Mm -hmm. For that matter? So they spend most of the day <laughs> with the teachers. And the teacher has been distressed about this test. That's all they're going to be getting. So I don't, I don't care what I could do at home for three hours. Sure. That's not going to change what the teacher is telling them for eight. That's uh, true. I'm going to agree with you on that. I know teachers The teacher could be like, you got to go to bed again. You got to do this. You got to wake up. You got to eat breakfast. You got to do this. You got to don't look to the side. Don't. That's too much nonsense. Let, at least let me deal with that then. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That I know my son. I know my daughter. And I know how, how to talk to them about it. Yeah. But if I got somebody to stress themselves out about it, what, what kind of message are they going to be giving my kids? Sure. Okay. So we want to thank you very much for for giving our call. Gracias, Miguel. Um, yes, uh, my you dear, uh, you're coming next w Tuesday. You're going to be here live, right? I believe my husband will be down there. 
Well, that's why we're in touch throughout the week and see what we can make it over there. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, we went, we this topic is a hot topic. Mimi, thank you so much for bringing that that theme to us. And we as again, we got our first no, so we're going to get and Randy, thank you for the suggestion. We are going to continue in that search. So, see you next Tuesday, you and your husband, my dear, and um again, if we could go to a song so we could regroup and then we'll be back with Mr. Randy Ross. Okay, listen to me. Listen to me. Uh Randy <laughs> has agreed to become a, an honorary Puerto Rican, so we are but he can't changing speak any Spanish at all. Uh, yeah, and, and we're teaching him to say the Randy Ross to uh, oh, raspar la Don't expect that today. <laughs> all right, listen to me. Seguimos ahora. Aquí estamos en listen to me. Se me ha ejecutado hasta a la identificación anyway. Mimi, congratulations! You got your press pass yeah. now. She's a official member, uh, defender, defender of the Constitution, defensora de la Constitución, de la libre prensa. Wait, wait, wait! Why didn't I, I get one of those? I got my first press pass, and now I'm officially in the press. And okay, Jay, um, um, Melissa, <laughs> Brett. Carolyn, none of us have that. All right, well, uh, so that, then there's four more that I have to do. <laughs> <laughs> that, there is no problem with this me. Is, uh, wow. Hey, listen to me, family is growing by leaps and bounds, and who knows, probably we'll even have a crowd and an audience. We could rotate the guests coming in. Yeah. God is good. God is bendecido. But we have hit a topic there that with the, with the school that we have to continue, Mimi. So yes. you we, we, we tackle you tackle the uh, current school board members. I'll try and help with help with Randy. We'll get some candidates and we keep on. But it's an yeah, awesome thank job. You. Thank it's you. an awesome job. Yeah. And now you got the press pass. Now they can't say they can yeah. say nothing. I am the press. Yes. Respect me. Respect my authority. Now we can finally get answers. Look at that voice. That's an yeah. interesting voice <laughs> Jay has. Yeah, I, I, well, it's kind of like a South Park yeah. cross, you know? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Cartman, I, was, with that. I was channeling my Cartman, but it didn't work. But hey, it's cool. All Randy, right. let's let's go w w with you, brother. Uh, how's uh, how's things going in in, in Orange County? Well, um, you know, I, I want to talk a little bit about an article that came out today, mm -hmm. um, spotlighting Bertika Cabrera Morris, who oh, is yeah. uh, an amazing um, a Hispanic leader, female Hispanic leader in our community. Uh, uniquely, you know, Bertika and I, I write about this, and it's available on Florida News Network. That's a plug. I can, okay. I can do a plug. It's not a, right. it's not in competition with you, um, and, and we talk about this because you know she was a she was Cuban and she she basically left Cuba with her family and went to Spain, went to California, ended up in, in Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, and long story short, is she's one of the most powerful women in Florida politics. And yeah. you know I encourage people to take a look at the article, but more importantly, what I I want you to think about is here's this lady who she's a quiet she's like a stealth. She nobody even knows what she kind of does, but she does it with amazing gifts. And so it was kind of nice to see that come out today. It was nice to see that she actually appreciated it. Because you know what happens often in, in politics is we, we think that because someone is somebody, everybody appreciates them. Mm -hmm. And that's not really yeah. the way it is, is it? We yeah. often end up spending a lot of time on the people that don't necessarily matter quite as much. You know, That is true. Uh, true. The elected uh, uh, officials. So I want to make sure that people pay attention to that. You know, we have our first uh, Trump, uh, Orange County for Trump. And, you know, Brett Shulman's listening today. And I wanted to let Brett know. Hi, Brett. Yeah, we're not going to talk about um, offshore racing, which I know Brett no, loves talking about. No, we're not talking about <laughs> offshore racing. Sorry. Of course, he blamed you for that one, just so you know. But, <laughs> uh, offshore. But, by the way, it's, it's wonderful what Brett does. I, I do give him that. But, you know, uh, long story short, is we do have our first uh, Orange County Trump Republican event. You know, cool. we're one of the only organizations actually in the state of Florida. They're, they're coming along here mm -hmm, and there, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and we're happy to have the support of the Orange County Chairman Lou Oliver as well as uh, our state committee man, uh, Paul Paulson, who signed yes. off on that, pa that paperwork. And of course, Blaze Agnolia, who really was the one that said, Chairman Randy, Agnolia, you, yeah. yeah, Chairman, and he was the one that said, Randy, you guys need to create a Trump Republican club. So on the 13th of May, we'll be having our very first organized meeting which by the way is called barbecue for trump and what we're going to be doing is a uh, uh, barbecue but we'll have a program in there i'm gr great ex excited to see that our our good friend um uh catherine gates skipper who is the veterans for trump chair will be coming over uh and speaking and we'll have different folks on, on par as part of this program maybe we'll have you there jay cool yeah, we'll have you go listen to me we'll have listen you do that you know, and, and and more importantly what we're trying to do this is open to 
Republicans, Democrats, and independents because it's a club. It's not actually the official uh, Republican organization, as you, as you will, with OCREC. This is an opportunity to get people to come inside to the club to decide, hey, do I really like this, this, this president? Mm -hmm. Do I like these people? Do I want to be part of this? And hopefully, if we're lucky, they do trans transition over to the Republican Party. And Jay, as you and I have talked at length and extensively, we have a lot of work to do with the that Hispanic community to get them to trust, if you will, um, the Republican Party more. Uh, we have a lot of work to do with a lot of um, minority communities, for that matter. And so uh, during the next three or four years before Trump is up for re-election, we look to try to embrace and change it. You know, we go back to the same conversation we've had for so long here, and that is mm -hmm. there's 117,000 more. Hell, that number could be, oh, I just said a cuss word. I, I might be in trouble for that one. <laughs> don't, don't worry. Don't you worry. got to strike oh, yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, that, that number could be better, that better, could, better. back during the election in November. It was 117,000 more Democrats than Republicans. Those are not easy numbers to make up something. And I think, you know, Jay, when I ask you for a quote regarding your your comments regarding Bertica, you, you even indicated that somebody needs to take that by the horns, basically, and really start trying to to do more with that audience. And so partially what we're talking about here is how do we get more women, Hispanics, blacks, Asians, gays, you name it, involved, not only just in this effort, but supporting our president. And, you know, with, with what's been happening, you know, we, I, I'm certainly you're going to talk about, I'm sure you're going to talk about the confirmation of Judge uh, Gorsuch. Neil Gorsuch, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, we were losing. Estábamos perdiendo. Trump está perdiendo. Trump está perdiendo. Trump is losing. Trump is losing. <laughs> hey, and what about Neil Gorsuch? Crickets, crickets, crickets. Well, you know, and, and, and the flip side of that, Jay, is, um, and Mimi, uh, I, I can talk to you now. You're, yes. I'm, you're not looking like you're going to attack me at this point. <laughs> you, she, has, she hasn't taken off the heel, you know, she hasn't <laughs> hit me. But what are you doing? There, no. there is a flip side to the nuclear option that mm -hmm. did come out with the decision that they did, and so they could do a majority versus going for the 60 votes. And that is that if, let's say, Trump doesn't win in 2020, and it's a, a Democrat, well, then you have this entire shift where now it takes Democrats only 50% plus one or whatever to be able to confirm someone <laughs> like a, a, a Supreme Court justice. So it's not a it's not the easiest option. I think what we can certainly agree on though is what we were watching was this this battle that no one was going to win in the end unless they did the nuclear option, right? Exactly, because the thing of it is is that just postponing just postponing the uh, inevitable his nomination, the Democrats look very bad, and unfortunately. Everything that the media, even they haven't talked about popularity now. Now that um, uh, the president has taken action against Syria, the popularity vote has gone up, but they ha haven't. Cricket, crickets, crickets. You know, you hear silence on the other side of the media. The liberal media, they talk about, yeah, he did a good job, but they don't talk about his ratings. His ratings right now, I think, by one of the uh, Rasmussen's was peaking up towards the 48s, 47s. You know, I, we've never paid, at least as a campaign, we didn't mm -hmm. pay a lot of attention to any of those polls, any of those ratings. I think when it's all said and done, often those polls are somewhat jaded and go towards certain types of audiences. Um, I think yeah, I people agree. as individuals have to make a decision. What do you believe, you know? And I stopped, you know, don't ever tune in The View during the day. If you happen, <laughs> if you happen to go home for lunch, you don't want to see Whoopi Goldberg and her gang of haters yeah. going after. Uh, oh, our, yeah. I mean, I don't know how they get sponsors. We can't get sponsors. We should have. But based on that, we should have sponsors out the door for your show. They, they get sponsors. And here was, here's what they do for the first 25 minutes of the show and in sprinkles throughout. They attack Trump the entire time. It's like. And I don't know if I you know. Obviously, I, I'm not a woman. I mean, not. I have. I don't think I'm not a woman. <laughs> All but right. you know, I can't imagine being a woman, which I'm sure is their audience sitting at home. And, and Mimi, you. I don't know that you're sitting at home watching this. You can tell me if you are. But if you saw these women spending 25, 30 minutes of every hour on a show attacking the president almost like this every day i can't imagine that, that excites you when you're sitting there or that or that resembles you and the women that i know the Catherine gates skippers of the world the melissa mcgee's the 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 pratika cabrera morris's these women that have strength and independence in their life and also in their faith and their families they're not going to buy into that and i just wonder how they're able to get folks to to 
to, to advertise there. I don't know. Well, because the thing of it is, is uh, this is still in, uh, an evolving project, but I know that the advertisers will come. Uh, as a matter of fact, oh, we're going to we, make it happen. We're going to make it happen. Naturally, um, and basically, in. and basically, that's the difference between my show and something like The View, where they have to send seasoned uh, uh, sellers, uh, vendors, to be able to get these people and say lock them into contracts for 10, 15 right. years for while the show is milked. I'm not like that. I I produce a quality show. You have a show de caridad with quality people. Thank you. And, and the Why did you only point at, point at me being? I, I, I went like, like this. To know. I went like Everybody, this. Everybody, you saw that, right? He went yeah. like this. I produced with quality people. <laughs> Didn't even look this way. Wow. Wow. This is too much. I, I, I should have given him the press pass a little <laughs> bit <know>. earlier. <laughs> that would have appeased him. But you understand what I'm saying, right? How do they... How do Americans, I mean, obviously a lot of Americans like what they're doing or they wouldn't be able to stay on the air. I mean, even with a contract, you can get out of those. Yeah, right? that's true. That's so true. there must be some desire to hear this anger and hate towards our oh, yeah. president. And, you know, have you had a show since uh, we actually bombed um, the Syrian um, uh the yeah, Syrian air, airport. Airport. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we did. We did have one, but no. As a matter of fact, we I thought did it was the on show. Friday. Yeah, I thought yeah, it was. Yeah. It was on Friday. So now, yeah. so this is the first show after the bombing, and the thing of it is, is that, again, he was very specific in what he did, and again, he told the people in the, in the media <laughs> what he did. He right. even, the general even came out and said, "Hey, this is what we did. This is what we saw. This is what we analyzed. This is how we did it." Again. He is doing what he said he was going to do, Donald Trump. People will, will dislike him. Most likely he will not lose in 2020. It has to, it's like he's, it's like something really, really terrible has to happen. I don't think because he's going the right route. As long as he continues that right route that of what he preached in the, in the campaign trail, he keeps on doing it. He keeps on visiting Florida. Visit Florida. Listen to me. Oh, by the way, Mr. President, can you make a pro statehood? Uh, uh, you know, like Regan and all. This? I, we need a pro statehood. Pro statehood for Puerto Rico. No. Uh, look, at, look at. Look at. Get back in the microphone. You're losing the microphone, there. <laughs> I did. I lost the microphone. Uh, well, the thing is, Randy. Um, many of those things. Uh, many people want to put a brick on the statehood for Puerto Rico, and Syria is important. But the thing of it is, is oh. The United States is too busy for, to deal with Puerto Rico. The United States has many other things to do with, than deal with Puerto Rico. Syria is very important. The killing of children is important. What the president did is important. But what is more important that there are still 3.3 million American citizens that don't have a United States senator nor, nor five representatives. Hmm. I where, where are we at with that? I mean, what do you think? I mean, we've talked about this before, you and I. Mm -hmm. What is the, the real answer there? What is the solution? The solution is that Puerto Rico has to become a state. Because Wait, does, as a is, state, how about Congressman? Is it Congressman Sir, is Senator Soto? Or Car, Car, what is it, Congressman? I can't, uh, Congressman Soto. Uh, yeah, Congressman. What, what, what is his feeling about that? Have you talked who, to him? Senator? Congress, uh, uh, Congressman. Like Soto, like uh, yeah, uh, I mean, oh, Congressman uh, Soto. Darren Soto. Uh, Darren Soto. Yeah, yeah. What, what is his feeling? I mean, I get confused. There's Congressmen, Darren, senators uh, are all over the place. Um, uh, Congressman Soto does not want Puerto Rico to become a state. And the reason that for that it. would be what? Yeah. Uh, that uh, Puerto Rico would lose their culture, would lose their language. He's going the independence route where that is, they go into fear mode. And you're from Puerto Rico, and correct? I'm from born it, and is uh, Darren from Puerto Rico? No. Okay, so do you believe that? Let's put it this way. Wayne is more Puerto Rican than... than, than Lebinsky? Yeah, Lebinsky. Wayne. Wayne. Hi, Wayne. Hey, Wayne. Wayne. No, Wayne has more Hispanic blood than, than, than Darren Soto. So no wonder he doesn't feel that, that way, no. right? Now, what do you feel? Well, I feel that Puerto Rico has an ec economic turmoil. And if you look at every state that entered the Union, even Florida, when Florida entered the Union... It was in $2.2 million back in, 19, in, uh, in the 1800s, 1900s, something like that, when, when, that, when that flag was changed. But uh, uh, history could serve me right, and I'm pulling this off my, from my mind. They had a very big debt because of the territorial clause that they were in. Once they were a state, they were able to renegotiate the debt under the laws of the Constitution that allow a state to declare bankruptcy. So basically, it's 
statehood the only viable solution with our two senators because Puerto Rico has never had representation in the United States Senate in 150 years plus. So what are the detractors doing now? Saying, oh, it's not the right time. The president's too busy. The president will always be, be busy. He's leading the free world. We are part of that free world. We have to make that decision. Neil Gorsuch, there's a, there, uh, in the next show, I'll bring you the brief between, uh, that uh, Sotomayor, Justice Sotomayor wrote, and how she clearly delined that it's still in the hands of the Puerto Rican people, right. but to never forget their culture. In other words, Sotomayor sides with Puerto Rico not becoming a state. Huh. Really? A justice of the peace of the Supreme Court right. of the United States. Right. Yeah. And, and if anybody thinks if that you I'm saying If you it took wrong, a poll right now in Puerto Rico, the Puerto Rican population, what would they, how would it, just give me the numbers, how would well, it fare? Um, taking example, the uh, 2012 plebiscite that was taken there, 54 to 56% would choose statehood. So it's not it's not overwhelming. It's just but it's, it's a, a majority. Plus, it's a fifty plus one. And as, is that do we even know if that number would have been primarily include the folks most likely impre, uh, in, uh, influenced by the economic downturn? Exactly. Well, so of basically. course they're going to vote. They're going to vote. For, they're going to vote. They're going to vote because, because you know there's a lot of other folks and not to name anyone, but some of them don't feel that we should absorb all of that um, debt that is going on in Puerto Rico. But again, it is the the right of a state to renegotiate. Uh, a debt, the right of a state. You see, now, should the United States absorb all that? No, because again, we're taking we're taking the lack of presidents mm -hmm. of a territory, assuming its power within Congress, so it could renegotiate its debt, and that's where the infrastructure of Puerto Rico will get better. We could make better partnerships with states like Florida because Florida and Puerto Rico are intricately united. Por a state of Puerto Rico and a state of Florida, the unity between those two states mm -hmm. is very, oh very important. Wasn't there like 1.1 million people that have gravitated from Puerto the Rico. island to Florida? Exactly. It's a huge number. That is why I gave you that quote and going cir full circle to your, your, your initial thing. We want Neil Gorsuch to be approved. Puerto Ricans. Why? Because if anything he was, happens, so he was. Any, 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 anything that happens with the new admission of a state that ends up in the, in the Supreme Court, guess what? Gorsuch has said that he will go down the letter of the law. That means that Puerto Rico has the right to become a state of the union. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> if it gets tangled up in the court. So that's why it was necessary that Neil Gorsuch uh, uh, get confirmed, and he's a great, great, great justice. He's Do we have any time at all today to talk about what's going on between the Florida governor um, and our state attorney? I don't know. Do you ha want to even explore that conversation? Um, just... um, uh, the lady, the, I don't want to even uh, mention. Uh, 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 Aramis. Aramis. I, uh, you know, she's now filed today. She's suing the governor. You know, if you just look back on that timeline, I'm just curious what you think about it, Jay, because when I look at someone who executes a police officer, I can't imagine a more um, foul uh, act that would warrant the death penalty. I would agree, but uh, something comes to my when you mention that, something comes to my mind. Uh -oh. The Manchurian Candidate. Remember that movie? No, I didn't see that. Oh, wow. Why was it subtitles? Yep, probably. Sometimes. I probably couldn't have read it. I couldn't listen to <laughs> but it. But there is a movie out there if you Google it, the Manchurian Candidate, where there's this candidate that is backed by a by a oh, by millions of dollars. Oh, I think I did see that yes, one. Yes, but millions of dollars. And George Soros, when he dips his money, and he didn't even only not do that. That's why Darren Soto is there, and I think the other girl, and the other girl, and the other congressman. Yeah. yeah, you know, I don't. Well, they're all. Yeah. You know, this is becoming clearly a partisan issue. Mm -hmm. It is a Democrat versus. Or, I mean, I don't want it to be that, but I think it is clearly becoming that because many Republicans say, you know, put this guy, you know, in the electric chair, do whatever you have to do. He's done, et cetera. Um, yet at the, the flip side of this is she, you know, the governor removed her, which clearly the chief justice of Orange County clerk, courts, uh, Judge Lawton, found great support to mm -hmm. make that decision. He would not have done that if he didn't believe that. Oh, yeah, he he I don't believe that for a second. He, he, he so he removes her put somebody else in, and she says on a Friday she's not going to go down the road of trying to fight the governor. The weekend goes by, crickets, right? Mm -hmm. Monday she comes back and says, I want to be back on the case. And all of a sudden now what you have is a case that's 
clearly clouded and most likely going to head if it, it's all said and done probably to a hung jury or a dis the, the trial be whatever it is when a judge throws out the the whole thing and starts over and you have this whole argument now going on but i believe it's a very sometimes race driven and sometimes politically driven argument that i'm watching it's between i could, I could imagine the the phone call ring ring <laughs> hello this is daisy this is george Soros. what the <laughs> hell are you doing who are you who who's uh, that guy talking what are you doing you gotta get back on the case girl you know i'll, I'll send you the check. absolutely i believe that had to have happened because he just gave her a million half dollars to get elected or whatever the amount was, was and yeah. all of a sudden she's she's off you know she's totally saying no and now that the you know he's removed her from what 26 cases yep. the governor yeah. has I, I think she's gonna lose that I think what's gonna happen I think what's mm. interesting if you watch social media is people are enjoying the idea that maybe we should fight and support her they're forgetting the fact that this guy stood over and executed a police officer. He executed and killed a mother and her unborn Born child. Child. And this wasn't white on black crime. It wasn't even Hispanic on this or that and the other. It was, a black it was on black, black on black <clears throat> crime. You killed a black peace police officer. You you can't even bring race in, into this. Yet the only time I'm hearing it brought in is when they're trying to suggest <laughs> that she's the first African American um, uh, state attorney elected in the state of Florida, and somehow that has some relevance. Over the death penalty, I just don't understand that. Not at all. The 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 <laughs> the realities of the line of politics and social social justice are very blurred, especially for a person like Daisy. You know why? Because she's a career politician. She's doing this <clears throat> for the sole purpose of a puppeteer named Soros, who's funded her campaign. Can she have gone the way of uh, Bernie Sanders or many other? No, and that is the problem with the. Uh, Democratic caucus in here in Orange County, they know that their they, their days are counted, and they understand that they're in for a fight. They know it. They're running scared. Yeah, Randy. but you know what? Let me be honest with you. Mm. I was talking with someone today whose name shall go uh, unnamed. That's thinking about running for county commission, and they were looking at someone's campaign report. It looks like uh, Soros is even getting into some of the county commission races yet again. And, and when you think about that kind of money, money, as you, as you know, is what makes you win or lose. And he clearly used money to, to beat, even with Jeff a a Ashton's indiscretions on, what was it, Dolly Madison, Holly Madison, whatever that website was that he was on. Mm -hmm. He was still, a good, from everybody I've talked to, he was still a good uh, uh, well, a state attorney. State attorney, that's what yeah, he was. Yeah. And, and, and even now, you have this situation where people are starting to really question if, if, if all it is going to take is money. Well, listen, George Soros is looking at the I-4 corridor, and it's weak. Yep. It's really weak. you got Orange County, Osceola County, clearly blue. You have Seminole County that barely went red this last time. Um, you start taking over the I-4 corridor, you pick it away. Before you know it, everything gets adjusted and changed, and you can take over Florida. You take over Florida, you take over the presidency, which kind of brings us back to even why I'm here to begin with regarding the whole Trump campaign is that's what makes 2020 so difficult. And I think that's maybe why he's spending so much time and money on these races that to you and I would not make any sense for him to get mm -hmm. involved in. Mm -hmm. But when you've got billions and billions of dollars, some people buy fancy sports cars, some people buy elections. <laughs> So will this oh, will Orange County be the first uh, purchased elections? Well, that's a great that's, point. That's, that's an awesome point. That's, that's a show in and of itself. Yep. That will be. That's why we have. Listen to me. And um, true. Tenemos que ver lo que está pasando en Orange County y en Osceola County, porque el dinero que está sacando George Soros para vaquear a la que era la uh, state attorney's office, uh, that Daisy Darris, que no la quiero ni mencionar. Te, eh, nos da un poquito de pena y hay que estar al ojo visor porque el comprar un político y narcoestado en communism o a narco state they have millions of dollars too so can they buy into as a private citizen Soros it's like Randy said algunos compran carros some buy cars algunos compran poli uh, políticos sí. ouch yeah. listen to me Randy, there's a there's a there's a thing that we do have to do. Okay. And we do have to do the, the on the 13th of May. Yeah, we got to do that that right. barbecue. Right. June the second, Bohemia. That's a that's an all family Latin, English, and Spanish improv comedy show. There's gonna we want to put 300 people there. 
well, we want now, we are going to put 300 people. Right. There. Latinos. Americans. And what's the price point for that? What's the price uh, point? Price point is $15 for the show and $13 for the buffet. Oh. You, the buffet is not mandatory, but we are helping Cafe Mineiro, so sure. we humbly would like you to buy the dinner. And, and can I ask a really important question? What? Do they serve alcohol there? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Okay. We, have a separate, <laughs> we have a separate there. We have a separate. bar, and, the, and there's a separate uh, buffet. And that will help. And we have, we still have to talk. I still have to talk to Wayne. I still have to talk to you off off camera about this and off the show. But um, we want to bring um, a, a very uh, Chamaco Rivera. He's a very good uh, um, salsa singer, and he brings people in. And that's what we need. He brings Colombians in, Puerto Ricans in, Dominicans, and we need a name. Like so we got to find a sponsor. Is what we got to find a sponsor. Okay. Um, but it's not much money. It's it's not as much as what what. A big venue would be or a festival and right. why we, we do, do this I want to show this because if that show is good and you're satisfied and we could tr pr prove our political sponsors that this is something that we could move forward then we're engaging the, the community that you want to enter in a way that the Democratic Party doesn't do and you've told me from the very beginning when I first met you that that's what we were missing out on that we were not doing a good job of going into the Hispanic community the way the Hispanic community wants to be yeah. addressed mm -hmm. it wasn't just about the fact that you know, when you were saying to me things like, well, Randy, you got to make sure everything's translated in Spanish. It wasn't that they couldn't read English or mm -hmm. listen to English. Mm -hmm. They wanted to be spoken to in the native language, language and they wanted to read the native language. And this is another one of those situations where festivals and newsprint and, and it, don't look at the posters that they got because I'm not on one of them. Yeah. But <laughs> the posters that you're doing. <laughs> yes, hold on. <laughs> oh, oh Brett Shulman, we're not on any posters. <laughs> Brett, Carolyn, yeah. Melissa. We're not on any of their posters. Real. Okay, those look more like mug shots than they do. Okay, great, great. But <laughs> well, yeah, uh, Mimi and I, we were in Universal Studios. They they put us put us against the wall. Yeah. So look, see, we're not on any of that. Again, I should have gotten the ID cards, man. But yeah. don't worry. These are limited prints. These are limited prints, but we're going to have Randy. We're going to have Melissa. We're going to have Brett. Uh, <laughs> we got their pictures. Don't worry. They said, they're talking about mug shots, but <laughs> that was in Universal Studios, boy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we got... we it's got. Man -tan, okay? Oh, yeah. It's a man tan. It's a man tan. <laughs> so basically, we have... A... Oh, <laughs> gotcha. So basically, we're, we have posters. We have... Uh, we're coming out with some new posters every week. Uh, we have uh, some prizes to give. During the show, we have we have different gifts and knickknacks. But within those gifts and knickknacks, we're going to have uh, information about the Republican Party, about Wayne Levinsky, about your club. And, and what about that round thing? You were going to have her play oh. with that. Oh yeah, but Palo Paloma didn't come. We have oh, that's to. That's cool. We're, we're going to try it next Is that time. One because of the, that things you're giving away. Oh, that's cool. Well, this is one of the things that we could give away, yeah. Yeah, we that would be away. a great thing for people to have on their desk. Yeah. We need to brand it, though. Sure. It should be branded with the name oh, of your yeah. brand. We're going right? to try, try and get it and, and brand it. Well, it was made in China. So. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> we got to make it in the United States. Oh, at least make it, <laughs> yes. About two minutes into it. Miss Mimi, we're about, oh, my God, another another Tuesday gone. Look wow. at that, Mimi. And she's looking in her bag going, no. like, what the hell? <laughs> uh, uh, Too bad. I did a hell. <laughs> But anyway, Mimi, next week we're going to be talking about uh, the, the, the different things for the school. Yes. And basically, uh, uh, wow, we're going to have a re re really packed. Mel Randy, Melissa can come next week? We'll see. You know, um, I, Melissa was going to come tonight. She had family in town. Mm -hmm. um, Brett was on uh, temporary probation for talking more about the, uh, the um, boat well, we races. He, he's allowed to come back <laughs> now. Um, you know, Brett's amazing. He's got a great voice. He'll, you know, he's, I'm Brett Shulman and I do radio, but you know, we want to try to get Carolyn on here as well. I would love mm -hmm. to be able to continue to reach out to all the different folks that are on our executive board, including Leland uh, McKee. Leland knows more about policy and some of these decisions that the Trump organization is making than any of us. I mean, listen, I, I'm like you, I watch the social media. I, I, I try to understand it. I don't pay too much attention to mainstream media because if I did, I would be one of those folks that gets kind of lost in the process. Right. Um, but, you know, we want to continue to expand our board and, you know, um, and continue to expand our leadership by having, you know, folks that are um, representing all different facets of, of our community because that's how Trump wins in 2020. And so that's, of course, in the back of our minds the whole time is how do we keep a Republican president uh, in, in office? Um, 
you know, moving forward. At least that's our perspective. We have to win the I-4 corridor. And that means we have a lot of work to do, trust me. Yep. So listen to me. Mimi, thank you so much for being here with of me course. today. Another Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. We're going to be activado, como dicen en Puerto Rico. So Mimi, anything else would you like to say? No, I really just, I really want uh, to speak with a lot of these, you know, someone from the education board or someone from the party. Someone please come and speak to us about this FSA testing. There's a lot of people I try to speak to in the PTA. Unfortunately, they denied. I don't understand well we, we have just hit the iceberg so exactly. it is a it is a big hot topic button the fsa randy thank you very much mr miguel thank monte you. muchisima gracias for being our engineer and talking to us about your perspectives in education and it's always uh, a pleasure doing business with you real quick and shout out to royal royal oh. baby boy royal, royal. Come here, royal. say hi real quick Say hello. Hi. All right. Yeah. Yes. This is my eight-year-old taking the FSA test, so we just want to say you You're got gonna this. You're going to get it. You got this, bro. Job, you got bro. this. You got this. Well, God has blessed us with another day. Dios nos ha bendecido con otro día, otro martes. Y será hasta el martes que viene. Y acuérdate que todo se puede en, el, en la vida y en el amor. Cuando tú te tienes con Dios al frente, todo es posible. Shami, I love you, baby. See you in a little while. Right. And uh, listen to me. Yo soy Jay Jesús Rodríguez Caballero. Nos fuimos, papi. <laughs>